Hello, my name is John Kimbrough. Uh, we are beginning a new series on Spirit Filled Podcast uh, concerning Islam versus Christianity. And um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to begin with a prayer. Uh, And then I'm going to have Kimberly Mills, who is the producer of our podcast, ask some questions that relate to introductory uh, material uh, on this class. Uh, This will be a series. Uh, I expect there to be at least eight or nine uh, podcasts uh, on this uh, subject. So let's begin with a prayer. Almighty God and Father and Creator of all, it is so good that we can call you our Father. It is so great to know you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, How do we ever thank you for what you've done for us, uh, the wisdom and the love that was sent forth in sending your only begotten Son, and knowing that he was willing to go through what he went through for us, that we're so sorry that he suffered uh, the way he did, but so thankful that he was willing to do it. And through your, your spirit, to have that Holy Spirit that searches our hearts and, and connects us to you in a way that we could never con- connect on our own. Uh, Father, as we start this new series, help us to uh, be diligent, to, uh, to understand what your word says, uh, to examine all things to see if they be in accordance with your word. Uh, Help us, Heavenly Father, to teach the truth, but do it in love. Uh, Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to study and to talk uh, and to learn more, not only about what others believe, but how to represent what we believe uh, to others. Uh, help us, Heavenly Father, to uh, do what Jesus said when anyone is in conflict uh, with us as Christians. And that is uh, to, first of all and above all, love them. Uh, secondly, to bless them. Thirdly, to do good to them. And fourthly, to uh, pray for them. And then we would be like our Heavenly Father. So uh, be with us in this series on Islam. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Kimberly, if you would, you can uh, ask uh, the first question that we've been asked on this series. Okay. Um, I guess, first of all, we need to know what qualifies you to teach this subject. Well, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to um, studying the Bible, I have studied the Bible uh, for over 40 years. I've uh, studied it. I've preached it. I've taught it in many places in, in, in America and, and overseas. I've been a missionary and I've done a lot of study in the Word. So I think on that end it qualifies me. And I've done a lot of study uh, about Islam. And um, uh, I've actually taught uh, this course in uh, two different churches and I'm going to teach it again uh, coming up next month, which would be a lot more detailed than what we're covering in this class. But to make a long story short, I've done a lot of study in it, and uh, I have done a lot of study on the contrast between Islam uh, and Christianity. Okay, so being a Christian, why do you feel it's important to study Islam? Well, that's a good one. Uh, I think it's it's important to study Islam because uh, statistically, uh, Islam is the future. Uh, of our country. Uh, Right now, um, as you probably know, there are approximately 7 million Muslims in the United States of America. And uh, when you you look at the facts, according to the UN, uh, Islam is growing at a rate of 6.40% compared to 1.46% at the same time period for Christianity. Uh, it uh, is is going to overtake uh, uh, Christianity and be the number one religion uh, in the world. Um, but not only that, uh, it's, uh, incre- it's it's expected to increase in population uh, in the, over the next twenty years from one point six billion to two point two billion by twenty thirty. Uh, In fact, they say that within 35 or 40 years that every second birth in the world will be uh, to a Muslim family. So Islam really is one of the fastest growing religions uh, in the world. 
And, and as you know, that there is a lot of violence that's associated with Islam. In fact, uh, Muslim fundamentalists have killed uh, 3,107 Americans. Uh, they've injured 1,688 in 75 terror attacks across the United States. Um, so it is uh, um, something that with the growth in population and with more and more uh, of those of the Islamic faith uh, entering into this country, we see them every day, we associate with them, we have contact with them in school and work and, and, and uh, in, in different places, that uh, more and more fundamentalists are going to come to this country and we are going to deal with uh, those who are immersed in the Islamic faith, it's just a, it's just a number. It's a, a numbers game, and the more who come, the the more detailed uh, information uh, they're going to have, and and the evangelism of Islam is going to be greater and greater. So we need to know as much as we can about the differences. But are you saying all Muslims are terrorists? Oh, absolutely not. Um, there are many Muslims who are peace-loving, fun-loving uh, people. I, I think, though, that the, the main difference between Islam and, let's say, Christianity is that the fundamentalism of the two are very, very different. In other words, all Muslims are not terrorists any more than all fundamentalist Christians uh, believe the same thing. They are people who call themselves Christians but don't adhere to the Bible or don't use it as their guide uh, for their actions. But on the other hand, uh, in Islam, uh, there are those that don't follow the fundamental uh, uh, teachings of the Quran and the, the Hadith and uh, Sunnah and so forth, but um, there are those that do. Uh, I, I think a good illustration is uh, what the uh, President Obama said uh, at one point when he was speaking at a prayer breakfast, and he said, before uh, Christians get on their high horse, we have to remember we've had our dark days, and, and then he quoted the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, the problem with a statement like that is that uh, when a Christian uh, engages in violence uh, of any kind, he cannot go to the new covenant uh, or to the life and example of Jesus Christ to justify his actions. But on the other hand, if a Muslim wanted to engage in violence, he can find violence uh, and, and in, um, in Islam, uh, in its uh, the Quran and in the Hadith of the life of, uh, of, of Muhammad, uh, so so it's there if you if you want to, to find it. I think there's a huge difference between a, a Muslim who grows up in um, the uh, Western culture influence uh, versus uh, the Middle East. In fact, uh, in middle the Middle East, the school system there. Uh, teaches directly out of the Hadith and and teaches some very violent things, uh, some some things that include uh, hatred uh, toward uh, the the Jews especially, uh, and uh, human rights organizations have tried to get them to stop that, you know, but. Um, uh, they continue to do it, whereas that kind of teaching of children in, in America is not taking place. But uh, I see that there is a difference in, in my my view of, of a Western uh, raised uh, um, uh, student of Islam versus one that is educated in the Middle East. Okay. And so do you feel biblically justified in judging someone else's religion? Well, you know, that's important. A lot of people will say, well, we're not supposed to judge uh, uh, in, in anybody's uh, religion. But I'm afraid that's, that's not what the Bible says. I, I'm not supposed to judge a human being's heart. Uh, I can't judge why a person does what he does, but I can judge uh, the actions of that person. In fact, I must judge. In 1 John 4 and 1 it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. 
Jesus warned his disciples that they need to be on the alert for many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, Matthew 24 and verse 11. So I think it's very important for us to test uh, any religion, uh, and especially in our culture uh, of relativism, uh, in our culture that kind of looks at all Religions as just kind of different approaches or pathways to God. If it's one thing that you'll come away with after this study, it is that when you truly examine the doctrines, and that's what my focus is going to be on, is is the doctrines of Islam versus the doctrines of Christianity, then you will definitely see that they are radically different approaches to God. That if you follow one, you cannot follow the other. Uh, they are, are are very exclusive of each other. And uh, so I think for those reasons alone, biblically, it's important for us to study about other religions and, and what they teach. So are there any important fundamental facts that we need to know while listening to this podcast? Yeah, I think there is. I, I, I think as, as an introduction, there's some very important fundamentals. Uh, first of all, really the heart and soul of the Islamic faith is the prophet uh, Muhammad. Uh, a lot of people don't know a lot about Muhammad. He was born in Mecca in 570 A.D. and he died on June 8, uh, 632 A.D. Uh, his father died before his birth and his mother shortly after that. Uh, so he grew up, you know, educated uh, uh, on the caravans and working on the caravans, and he had kind of an international education. Uh, he, he was married uh, at, the, uh, uh, at 25, uh, and he was married to, to his boss, who was 40 years of age, and he was um, only 25, but they were married for 50 years. Uh, all of his sons died from that marriage. Uh, he did do something very controversial in our view, is that he married um, a nine-year-old girl. Um, and um, when you speak to someone who uh, is a Muslim about that, they will be quick to point out back in those days that uh, Europeans married 13 years old girls. But, you know, when you look at Muhammad, and you look at his life, uh, he was a person who could neither read nor write. Uh, and yet, when the angel uh, Gabriel supposedly appeared to him, uh, he was uh, at the age uh, of 40 years old. Uh, he continued getting these uh, revelations for, uh, for 23 years. And so uh, for 23 years, he got these revelations. And, and most people want to come pair the Quran uh, to the Bible, uh, but it's not really written like the Bible at all. Um, what would happen with Muhammad is he would get these terrifying uh, revelations and uh, which he would uh, we would begin to write. Uh, his, his first one happened on a mountain just outside of Mecca in the year 610 when he was 40. And he's, his own reported words uh, was the pain was so intense that he thought he was dying. And he was convinced that he was either uh, delusional or possessed, since it seemed impossible that someone like him could be a prophet. Uh, and that would really be based on his education. And so his first impulse when he found himself uh, still alive was to try to finish the job himself and leap off a mountain to his death. And that, of course, is written in about the life of uh, of Muhammad, so you know it's it. It, it was not like uh, the prophets of old that you read about in the Old Testament, uh, or even the New Testament. It was a, a very terrifying thing when he received these revelations, um, and um, he was described as sometime in these revelations. It was like a, the ringing of a bell. Um, one of his uh, associates said that I saw the prophet being inspired divinely on a very cold day and noticed that the sweat was dropping from his forehead uh, as the inspiration was over. So uh, Muhammad was, uh, uh, was confident uh, that he could distinguish his own thoughts from the message that were given, but he still questioned it, and, uh, and, and yet he wrote everything that he uh, had down. Um, so he gave uh, uh, the Koran, and the reason that he uh, recited this Koran, according to the message given to him, was to warn unbelievers of the day of judgment, 
to warn those who reject God's revelation, that is uh, the Koran, uh, to preach monotheism. Uh, he lived in an age where there were still many people who worshipped uh, many gods. And so monotheism is a very important aspect uh, of uh, Islam. Uh, to praise the name of Allah to the world, to give a vivid descriptions of the tortures of hell and of the pleasures of paradise. Uh, Muhammad said that Allah had wedded him uh, in heaven to, to, to many people. In fact, uh, I was reading one place where it said even the Virgin Mary was going to be one of his uh, perfect uh, uh, women that he would uh, be married to. Um, there are some basic facts that I think everyone should know really about Islam and uh, Islam is an Arabic word, and uh, it's uh, a verbal noun meaning self-surrender to Allah, literally uh, the God. Uh, Muslim means anyone or anything that surrenders itself to the true will of God. The Koran literally uh, means uh, the recitation, so it was a reciting of things uh, uh, and, and different from the Bible. You know, the Bible was given by inspiration. God used men. He used their vocabulary. He used their, uh, their life skills and their way of writing and speaking. Uh, but uh, the uh, Koran is totally inspired, even down to the punctuation uh, and the pronunciation. Um, its chapters are, are called surahs. So you'll hear me in this uh, podcast talking about uh, surahs. That'll be chapters uh, in the in the uh, in the Koran. Um, for a believing Muslim, the Koran occupies the position that Christ has for Christian. Uh, a Muslim. Uh, doesn't handle the text unless there are certain rituals of purity that take place. Uh, readings are preceded by the phrase, I take refuge with God from Satan, the accursed one, and they're followed by, God Almighty has spoken truly. Certain verses uh, are even credited with creative powers. The, the first surah is claimed to be good for scorpion bites. And so, I mean, it's, it's, it's much different than than uh, the way that we, we look at the Bible, you know. We have uh, a contextual looking at the Bible. Uh, we have in different interpretations in the scriptures. Uh, but the Koran is not written like that. It's just, it's different. Uh, the first surah of the Koran is considered to be the perfect embodiment of Islam. And it says, all praise belongs to God, Lord of the universe, the beneficent, the merciful, and master of the day of judgment. You alone do we worship, and from you alone do we seek assistance. Guide us to the right path, the path of those whom you have granted blessings, those who are neither subject to your anger nor have gone astray. This surah is repeated during the five prayers that Muslims are required to pray uh, every 24 hours. Um, the uh, uh, basic duties of a Muslim are called the five pillars of faith. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, declaring that there is uh, no God except Allah and Muhammad is Allah's messenger. Uh, the Salat, and, and forgive me if I don't pronounce some of these names properly, but uh, the Salat is the ritual prayer five times a day. It's performed uh, in the precise body movements uh, that are important as the mental state it may be performed almost anywhere provided that the Muslim faces uh, uh, the Mecca in Saudi Arabia, which is their most their sacred uh, mosque. Uh, the next one is uh, charity, which is compulsory for the poor. Uh, assets of 2.5% of uh, capital assets, such as, as bank deposits, but uh, nope, not possessions such as cars or houses. And then there's a fasting, a swam. I believe it's called. Uh, it's fasting from dawn to sunset set during the, the month of Ramadan, uh, the ninth month of the lunar calendar. And then there is a pilgrimage that each uh, Muslim has to take to Mecca at least once in a lifetime if he or she is able. And it takes uh, uh, place during the last 10 days of the, the 12th lunar month. 
uh, it is quite a spectacle uh, to see um, pictures of, uh, of this uh, trip uh, that is taken uh, to Saudi Arabia. Some, again, some more of the basic facts is Sharia is the moral code of the religious law of Islam. And there are two primary sources of the Sharia law, the precepts set forth in the Quranic verses and the, the examples of Muhammad in the Surah, the Hadith. Uh, so it's important for them for that law system to be invoked. Now, the Islam, uh, Islamic view of the Bible is based on the belief that the Torah, the Psalms, and the Gospels were revelations from Allah that became distorted or corrupted. Muslims believe that Jesus was a Muslim prophet, a messenger of Allah, and that he was not the Son of God. They believe he was never crucified or resurrected, nor indeed died at all. Instead, the Quran claims that God raised him unto himself. Uh, Islam is often classified among the Judaism and Christianity as one of the three Abrahamic faiths. Uh, but the Muslim conception of Abraham is really radically different from the Judo-Christian tradition uh, of is, uh, in Islam. Abraham is the prototypical Muslim prophet, and that it is in the Quran in which the uh, religion of Abraham is to be found. For example, a, a distinction of Abraham in the Quran is the report that he and his son Ishmael built the Kaaba. Uh, in Mecca and established it as the place of, of worship uh, for Allah. That's some of the things that are just you know, some basic things that people need to know really uh, about the Islamic faith. Okay, so you mentioned um, Muhammad and his revelations and, and what happened and how he wrote them down. What is the purpose for his revelations? Well, I, I kind of said that before the purpose of his res revelations was to warn people, to warn them that uh, they could not they uh, uh, get away from the judgment day. They needed to make sure they didn't reject God's revelations, uh, such as the Koran. Monotheism is a very important uh, um, um, cardinal fact and point of the Islamic religion. And then, of course, the uh, descriptions of heaven and hell and uh, what is going to be in the afterlife. Okay, and, and I think you've kind of already told us what is required of Muslims to be a faithful follower. Is there anything else you need to add to that? No, they have to follow the, the pillars of faith, and uh, they certainly cannot adhere uh, to some of the doctrines of Christianity. In fact, the two of the doctrines at least are uh, shirk or uh, considered to be uh, unforgivable sins that can be committed by a, um, by a Muslim, which we'll talk about that in just a second. And how are you going to approach this series and this study of the, the Islam versus Christian? Well, what I want to do is I want to go to the, fa the main fundamental differences in doctrine. And so this is mostly going to be a doctrinal study. Uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the nature and authority of the Bible, uh, the, the nature of God, uh, the view of humankind, the view of, of, of Christ. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the dark side of Islam. I want to talk about eschatology, uh, some of the uh, beliefs of Islam concerning the last days or events that surround the end of time, uh, and then compare that with the Christian viewpoints. And so it's mostly all going to be a, a doctrinal study. For instance, when we talk about the nature of the authority of the Bible, we're going to talk about how Muslims reject the authority of our Bible, and uh, they reject it because they believe that it's been corrupted, uh, that it's been changed, and therefore they reject it. Then uh, their rejection, surprisingly, and this is one of the most surprising things that, that I've found in studying their religion, is they reject the fatherhood of God. Uh, the, the very thing that we as Christians cherish so much, to be able to call God our father, to be adopted sons and daughters of God, 
Uh, even Jesus told us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. To a Muslim, that's uh, not good news. In fact, it's very offensive uh, because it, they actually believe that it puts God in the uh, company of the Greek gods in the past who had sexual relations with women and had children. Um, then, of course, the Trinity. This is a, a very... Uh, important uh, difference because those who believe the Trinity as and we do as Christians uh, that makes us committing the unpardonable sin of attributing a partner to God and that's a very important uh, study I think and then our understanding of, of humankind you know when, when it comes to sin uh, Islam looks at it very differently than Christians do. And even our understanding of salvation, we, we talk about salvation, and if we're talking with a Muslim, we're on, uh, you know, two different things uh, the, as we speak to them because they have a different view of salvation than we do. And then the denial of Jesus' death on the cross, um, and then the denial of Jesus' uh, deity. Uh, and then, of course, those things that are going to happen at the end of time. Uh, and I think that as we, we go through this study, the, the most important thing that we'll find is that Islam and Christianity offer two radically different versions of how one can approach God. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we close this question and answer session? Uh, no, uh, other than, uh, I, I mean, we, we could say a lot, but I think on this podcast we're going to limit ourselves to what, in what we say. Uh, and it may be that, you know, you never meet a Muslim. But these, uh, these are things that I think uh, questions and issues that are, that are raised and in, in, in contrasting the two kinds of doctrines uh, that uh, uh, not just Muslims uh, believe, but uh, in all different walks of life. As Christians, we need to be equipped uh, to uh, explain and defend our faith. You know, I go back to the words of 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to preserve yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth, with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. And so uh, I hope that this study will be of help to everyone who hears it. And uh, having said that, I think that's probably we can, what we'll cover for the introduction. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. And also uh, remember that if, if any of these podcasts have been an encouragement to you and you'd like to hear more, then you can go to johndkimbrough.com. Thank you, and have a great day.